What's up YouTube? If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button at the top right corner of the screen. For this tutorial, I'll be using the Wall Cordless Magic Clip, the Andy Slimline Pro, and the Andis T Outline. I'll also be using this white comb and this blue comb. Uh, for the, the guards for the Wall Magic Clip are going to be the number 2 guard, the 1.5 guard, the 1 guard, and the half guard. At the end of the haircut, I'll be using these scissors just to trim up some of the hair. And for those of you who have been wondering what that pencil is, it's not an eyeliner pencil, but it's a, called a Barber Magic Pencil, and it helps to enhance the haircut at the end. Well, starting off with this haircut, I'm going to be using the number two guard with the lever all the way open. So what this number two guard does for me is it allows me to remove bulk from the side of his head while I'm starting the haircut, and it also gives me space to work with while I'm trying to create his fade and if you look I'm not digging into his head I'm going straight up because I don't want to take off too much bulk because I want to leave some hair on the top of his head now I'm going to start with no guard on to create that first guideline with the lever all the way open and if you see I'm starting from the top of his ear and using like the corner of his eye as a reference point to create that first guideline and I'm bringing that line following the shape of his head and I'm going down not going all the way around evenly across his head because I want this to be a drop fade not just a regular ball fade and if you notice I'm just cleaning up a little bit of hair right here Alright, so now I'll be using the number one guard with the lever all the way open and I'm going to be creating his second guideline and the second guideline is going to be about the same length as the first guideline I created with the lever all the way open with no guard and if you are wondering how long or how deep you should cut in it should be about a half an inch to an inch for each guideline because you want to give your self some room to work with when you're fading. Now I'm going to go back to the number two guard and this time I'm going to create that third guideline and I'm going to do a scooping motion going out against his head. I'm keeping the, I'm keeping the hair on the top of his head because that's the hair that I want to curl at the end of the haircut. Okay so I'm going to start off erasing this first guideline I have that half guard with the lever all the way closed and I'm going to point out here in a second that you're going to use the corners of the blade when you're racing guidelines. You don't have to, if, if flicking is what you are used to hearing, right, go ahead and flick at the line but you don't necessarily have to flick, you just use the corners of the blades to erase the guidelines. And when I'm going and I'm erasing that first guideline, you can see me, I'm just taking out probably about a third of that first guide, uh, that second guideline with that, where the number, what I use with the number one. And I'm really putting the emphasis on the corner in the corners of the blades because you know, if you use the flat part it's going to make it that much more difficult to get rid of the guideline. Okay so now I'm moving to the keeping that same guard on and I have the lever halfway in between or in the middle and I'm moving up two thirds of that guideline and again I'm using the corners of the blade to erase uh, some of that guideline I created with that number one guard all the way open. And for those of you who are new at hair, hair cutting, keep a comb or brush in your hair in your hand to continuously brush the hair down that you're fading. Alright, so now I have the lever all the way open and I'm going to the top of that first guideline all the way to the top of that number one that I created all the way open 
with the half guard all the way open. And I'm not going to that third level where the number two is. And again, I'm combing his hair down and I'm using the corners of the blades to erase that first guideline. You can see me continuously comb his hair and right here I'm just adjusting the lever because uh, that number two guideline that I created in the back of his head wasn't hidden. And I have the guard still on so it does not take too much hair off when I'm doing this clipper over comb uh, motion. Okay, so now I have the number one and a half guard and the lever is all the way open. And right here, I'm gonna go to the top of that number two guideline. And it's, if you have the number one and a half all the way open and you're cutting into a number two all the way open, it, it gives it a really good blend when you're blending. And you can see me, I'm using the corner of the blade as I continue to cut his hair. Okay, so now I'm moving down below that with the same guard still on and I'm going to the bottom of that two guard or that two guideline with the one and a half all the way closed. And if you're looking closely now you can be like man this this fade is really starting to come through and, and that's the magic when you follow steps when you're when you're cutting hair. Okay, so I'm doing some touch-up work right here. I put the number one guard back on and I'm just going back over certain spots that I saw, uh, dark spots and just hair that needed to be blended a little bit better. And that's something that you're gonna have to do after you follow your initial steps, but just get used to using your guards and um, erasing guidelines and knowing what the guards do and you'll be able to You'll be fine when you're fading and you'll get a, you'll get a lot faster. Alright, so I'm going back with the number one or the number the half guard and I'm cleaning that bottom line up. And you can see that the fade is really, really looking good. And this is a shadow fade, it's not skin fade, so it's very it's very important don't to don't go below that half guard. Right here I'm doing clipper over comb and I'm starting to shape his haircut a little bit more with that comb. And this is a styling comb. You put the top or the bottom when you comb up flat against his head and you go across the hair that's sticking out. Now you can angle the comb to allow you to take as much or as little hair as you need to when you're cutting, when you're doing a clip over comb motion. And you can see me, I'm taking a little bit more off because this is a drop fade, it's not a mohawk or anything like that, so I had to go back and take some more hair off with the clip over comb. And I must have seen something right here, so I put that one and a half guard back on and I went to the back of his head just to clean it up and to make sure that when I move to the other side of his head that it's gonna look, um, it's gonna be symmetrical and it's gonna look even all the way around not even all the way around as far as like the line for the fade but even all the way around from side to side and just remember what you do to one side you always do to the other side so right here you see me I'm scooping it up I'm bulk in man if you look <laughs> I'm moving in fast super spa fast speed right here but uh, super fast speed I can't move that fast I wish I could I could knock out a lot more haircuts and, <laughs> and generate a lot more revenue that way but yeah, <laughs> yeah that's kind of tough I'm not super human but. but if you're looking at the haircut you can see me using the corner of the blades and um, the clipper is always moving from side to side Don't be afraid when you see, if you look at this kid here, he has an issue with keeping his head down or wherever you put it, but don't be afraid to maneuver their heads. Just don't be ultra rough with their heads when you're moving a kid's head. All right, so now I'm gonna shape his haircut. So you have to pick out the hair to make sure that you get as much hair as, uh, as possible to sticks up in, and you're gonna get the, the right shape. So I have no guard 
on the clipper and the lever is all the way closed and I'm going from the bottom to the top when I'm shaping the side of his hair and this is a free hand so you have to be very very careful that you don't press super hard into this you just it's like you're cutting grass or a bush or something and right here this is very important when you're shaping someone's hair who has like an afro or a box or anything like that you go from the back of the head all the way to the front or whatever motion you go if you go from the front to the back you go all the way you don't stop in the middle it's gonna make the haircut that much more clean and that much more nice and just right here I'm going straight up again and you can see me that um, a little bit just using a little bit at a time right here because I want on this side I'm gonna create a part so I have to be extra careful with that spot <laughs> and you can see he has kinda like that that old 80s look but um, right here this is the only portion of the video that I'll be using the Andes T outliner and that is a modified Andes T outliner and if you look I comb out part and I use both sides of the uh, I hit the part with both sides the bottom and the top with the blade so I flip the clipper over when I'm making a part and here's that magic here's where the magic happens this is that barber magic pencil and for those of you who are new or are just getting started this is not a bad tool to use because it's gonna allow you not to push somebody's hairline back or um, create an uneven hairline and I don't really need this pencil but I like to use it because it gives it that enhancement look at the that you get when you see the those little ash marks on Instagram and, and Facebook and stuff like that and I'm using the Andy Slimline Pro to do his hairline a lot of the times I like to use on kids uh, a lighter um, lighter trimmer and not the Andes T outliner because those are ultra sharp and you you know I don't want to press on their head and create any scars or nicks so that's why a lot of times when I'm doing a kids haircut I use the Andes Slimline Pro and if you look um, right here a little bit of clipper of comb action to make the hairline stick out a little bit more Alright, so very, very, very important when you're getting ready to cut someone's around someone's ear. It's important to pull their ear down with the uh, with the off hand. This particular client or this kid, I've been cutting his hair for a while, and he has like a natural arch where his hairline is around his ear. So I didn't really have to move his ear with my hand, but it's important that you move the ears. So you don't cut behind someone's ear when you're cutting around their ear. And if you look, it's, I'm kind of like drawing like a pencil with the with the clipper. I'm using the corners to go around the ear. Okay, so I'm moving to the other side, and this kid, uh, he doesn't like it faded all the way, so he likes the shadow look. And a lot of people like that that shadow look. They want to see lines. Um, I'm stealing this from Matt Gifted Hands, but they want to see the lines that when you're fading that's what they call a shadow fade and he likes it squared in the back so that's kind of what I'm doing right here and again going around this other ear I'm using the corner of the blade and it's really really beneficial and this is a small enough clipper that you don't really have to that I don't have to hold his ear down so I'm moving to the other side of his head and I'm using the barber magic pencil to do this side of his hairline and <laughs> this kid he likes to frown a lot I don't know why he, <laughs> he frowns a lot but whenever you go around his temple or, uh, most kids when you do something unusual they're gonna make a little face so um, no nah, he's he's not getting hurt or anything like that but it, it's it's just that it's an unusual uh, feeling for that kid with the pencil with the trimmer and right after I finish up with the trimmer here you're gonna see when I comb it down he's gonna frown again he's just <laughs> it's kind of funny all right so now I'm finishing up this side uh, as soon as I finish with the trimmer I'm gonna hit his head with um, some really good stuff 
this is cream of nature uh, leave-in conditioner and I use about the size of a quarter in the palm of my hand and I rub it through the entirety of his hair or on the top of his head I rub it all the way through his head and I don't like to use oil sheen I like to use leave-in conditioner and a little water because it makes it a little more soft and gives it a better curl effect I feel okay so when I use the curl sponge I rotate the curl sponge in one direction around the entire head and when you do it one direction it allows you not to make his hair look um, messy it makes it look a lot more curly so I'm finishing up the haircut and um, after I do the curl sponge I hit it again with that part again with the Andis Slimline Pro both sides of the part to make it pop out that much more and just doing a little bit of cleanup work right here going around his ear and then I'll probably be yeah that's it I'm gonna be hitting that sideburn so <laughs> this kid had a, lot of, had a pretty good time and it's pretty cool to have a kid in your chair and to keep him entertained that long uh, for something like this and uh, he really liked his haircut he loves this look and I think it suits him and I hope this haircut really benefited you if you like this video go ahead like comment share and subscribe thank you for watching